be making bases. Hey, what's going on? It's Ever J Music, and in this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of where everything's at in Logic Pro 10 10.5. So, basically, when you first open up Logic Pro 10, you may or may not have all the different windows opened up, but I'm going to explain to you where everything is at. Um, if you look at the very top of the screen, you have all these, these different boxes. Each box is um, attached to a different window. So starting over here at the top left, this is going to be the box that's going to be uh, where all your sounds are, okay? This right here is also gonna be your inspector where you see that I. Um, in this inspector window, you can pretty much have your tracks here, um, the track that you're working on. You can affect the volume. You can uh, pan left and right. You can set up automation here set up your stereo output bus, send the signal to an auxiliary track here, um, you know, add effects here, change out the instrument here, and then they have some um, other EQing you can do. You could also do some, um, some pretty cool things here where you can loop the track or turn on quantization and things of that nature. Um, over here where you see the question mark, which I actually already have um, up and running, this is our quick help button. So when you have that set up, pretty much anything that you ho hover over, if you look right here where it says quick help, you'll see a um, brief description of what that window is and where it, what it does. And so that's very helpful. I do have it on, you can turn it off. I, I know this stuff anyway, but um, right here, this guy right here, this is where all of your different tools are. Um, different major functions you're gonna be using to um, edit your tracks and things of that nature. So we'll just talk about the most noted ones that you're probably gonna be using. The split to playhead, okay? Split by locator. So split to playhead is, this is the playhead right here. So if you have a track right here, anywhere this playhead is, if you go ahead and push split to playhead, it's gonna split the track in the middle right there. Split by locators, you know, on the either side of uh, this loop here, that, that's what that's gonna do. Of course, joining the track is joining together, bouncing the regions. You can bounce different regions within your actual workspace window. Um, you can move the playhead um, here. So we also have different values. You can do, move it by tick, um, you know, bar, beat, division, different things of that nature, which is pretty cool when it comes to moving the playhead, um, you, you know, when it comes to actually editing. You can repeat a section, basically double it and repeat it. You have a cut section, um, insert section, insert uh, silence. So all of these are gonna be different editing tools that you'll need and you can get to those by just going ahead and clicking here. Um, this next one is called the smart controls button. I really don't use it a whole lot, but I mean, you know, it's there for you. Um, any type of instrument that you have right here on your, uh, your track you can come in here and quickly edit there as well so it's, it's a good tool to have this guy right here if you click this button this is your mixer this is where you'll see all your tracks you can put effects on them you know different things of that nature we're gonna get into all of these things late um, in more depth in the course just so you know right here this is where you're gonna be able to access your piano roll this is where we can plug in notes along the grid. This is a grid right here. Um, the score option is where we can actually draw in MIDI notes that you can look in and look at as an actual score of music. So you'll have the different time signatures, different things of that nature. This is a new thing that um, Logic Pro 10 10.5 has added, which is the step sequencer. So based on what type of instrument um, well, samples you have loaded right here, you can actually plug in the notes by just clicking right here. You have different steps you could use, you know, so you can do different parts of the song. So like for instance, from right here to here, if I put the 16th over there, I mean, it's, it's just gonna basically break it up everything for you. Um, I, I wanna kinda wait to get into that more, more though because it's kind of complicated if I don't actually plug in some notes and stuff like that and plug in some sounds. But basically you have different sections that you can edit and create your own uh, step sequence. 
All right, but um, we have this smart tempo here. Um, so this is where you'll be able to correct tempo, your downbeat, time signature analysis, different things like that. Right here, this is your transport window. So you know, y'all know about this. This is like on every tape deck that you could see. You can fast forward or rewind the track, bring the track or the playhead to, very, to the very beginning. You can play, push record, and this is to set up your loop. Right here, this is basically showing you everything that deals with your track and measures of time. So you have your key time signature here, okay? Your key signature here, basically what key your song is in. You have your BPM or tempo, okay? And then this is actually gonna show you by beats or by actual time. So you have the time here and a beat right here. Pretty dope, right? This is something that you could click on to replace an existing recording. This is your tuner button. So if you want to tune instruments connected to your system, you hit that. This is the solo. This is, of course, if you have multiple tracks. And then this is just like a count in button. So like whenever the metronome comes on, like for instance, say if I was going to record, if I have this set up, it will count for four um, measures or bars or whatever, um, or four ticks, one bar before it comes in. And you could actually change however many bars you wanted to pause before it comes in. So like, for instance, you see how that was just one bar. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and I can change that. And I can say, man, let me get it to come in um, after two bars. So it helps like when you're, pro you're like, say if you don't really know how to play the music, you have to kind of practice first. This could really be a big benefit and help for you. So like I could do two bars now. One, two, three, four, now it goes. So that was two whole bars. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back to one bar. You can actually turn that off and then like, you know, there will be no counting to just start, you know. We also have the metronome here. You could turn that on and even if it's not recording, it will be playing. Okay, and then you also have metronome settings here. You can apply the default, save a default, customize the control bar and, and different things of that nature. So if you really want to get nerdy about it, you can come in here and really mess around and, and change everything. Um, let's come over here. Actually, this is your uh, master volume. So you can move that up as loud or, or as low as you want. I'm going to leave it at zero though. And then we'll talk over about what this little guy is. Basically, this is your list editors button. It's going to be able to show you um, all of your MIDI events, markers, tempo changes, signature events, etc. Okay. And it will make more sense once we actually get a, a song loaded in here or a project. Now, this is your notepad, which is pretty dope. You could actually leave notes um, in here or write. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, if you're an artist slash producer or songwriter slash producer, you can actually jot down your you know lyrics right here while the beat's playing and be able to like to pull up a session and have the lyrics, etc. Or you can write notes, you know, say if you're working remotely and you're exchanging files and different things like that, you can put notes in here to remind you or an engineer of what's going on. You can do it by track or project. So that's pretty dope. This right here is one of my favorite buttons. It's the Apple Loops. It gives you, I mean, well over 10,000 sounds or more. I, I would have to really just look back on it. But I mean, it's, it's thousands and thousands of sounds, man. I'm telling you, real good. And these are all royalty free, by the way. So you could actually use these without having to worry if somebody, you know what I'm saying, is going to steal anything from you or, or hit you with copyright or anything like that. That's one good dope thing about that. And then lastly, we'll talk about this guy. This is your browser button, and this is where you're gonna actually be able to go and search for files on your computer. So say if you wanted to bring in like an acapella or something like that, that's on your computer, you can come in here and click where your files are on your computer, and um, you know what I mean? Go in there and find it. 
So that's pretty much the gist of this. Um, if you ever see all these windows open, all you had to do is just click off of these buttons and it will allow you to focus in on what you're making. What you want to do is, is you just go ahead and play around within Logic. Turn on this little um, question mark here, which is your quick help. And just go in here and just look at everything, man. You know what I'm saying? That's really going to be something that's beneficial to you when it comes to learning your software. So anyway, that is this particular video. If you have questions, let me know. And thank you so much for watching.